Hello there, and welcome back to TNO, in which we're playing as... Glenn! Because I use constant commands to get him, uh, basically, we were so successful as RFK, that if I didn't use constant commands, we would have stuck with RFK, which is cool and all, but... Yeah, I don't know, I tried playing with RFK and trying different things to get Glenn elected properly, but, you know, I guess if you get back Hawaii, the ports of San Francisco and LA, you help liberate Africa from, you know, tyranny, and you help out the Indonesians from the bondage of Japanese tyranny. I mean, I guess people like that type of stuff? I don't know. We'll see what happens, but let's do it. It's time to clean house. The MPP has been expelled from the executive branch by the will of the people, but their influence still remains. Their appointees are still dotting the administration like rats in the walls, and while their intentions may be good, the effect on our administration is not. Many of them are young activists who should never have been hired or old legacy employees who should have retired long ago. First things first, we get rid of everyone who isn't interested in following our goals. They simply have no place in our new vision for the United States. The radicals will be thrown out, and we will restore stability and rationality to our government once more, and then we can begin enacting the president's plans. And we want, and we have, huge plans. So, <clears throat> office, you know, between episodes, I usually, like, look at guides a little bit to refresh myself as to how to, you know, do stuff, especially with this Glen run. So, we're going to go ahead and improve engineering. We have some research points, and this will increase our preparedness. Preparedness, you got to make sure that's as high as possible, so that we can have successful space missions. We have a Tokyo standoff. Has the Empire of Japan gone mad? Maybe, maybe. Let's see, we currently get 0.81 political power a day. We could cut other programs. I did invest a little bit more money. Ooh, 755 million. But, I mean, that's just a public approval is 45%. Uh oh. A low approval rate will result in Congress pulling funding. It can be increased by launching successful missions and bypassing legislation. Oh boy. Ooh, do we bring in the technocrats? Because there's a couple comments we want to get through, but pull people, put people that have supportive vision for the future into cabinet posts. Fun NAS will be unlocked, or Republican Democratic Party grows a little more unified. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what to do, because I want to fund NASA with more and more decisions. I mean, obviously we want to help support our party, because right now, because we basically use console commands for this campaign, there's a lot of center NPP members that we want to be with us, and we can work with them. We definitely can, obviously we're Republican. Even though Republicans shouldn't have won since there's only 10 of them in the, in the Senate. The far right, I don't know if we could really help do stuff with them. The MPP is working together well. We're actually working together well as well. American society is disunited. But we can always, and I did select, look, unify the party a little bit more. So we can use that political power to do that probably. So let's go into bringing the technocrats. We're bringing in the best we can. Scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and all sorts of experts. Who cares what they have if they have no political connections? Cronyism and corruption is how we got Nixon and they nearly broke the party. Congress may complain, but we can appease them easily enough, and this will ultimately lead to a stronger support staff in the future. It's more important that the officials we hire know how to do their jobs than it is what they know their, if they know their local, local congressmen. We're already fighting for a second in the moon race, and we cannot rise to meet the challenge on the backs of political appointees. Good point. The new slate. Hunt, Jacobson, Jethro, Johnson, Judd, Gore continued. Glenn had been trying to pay attention to the long list of names that his vice president was reading off to him. Each name was a different figure in the West Wing of the White House. Each name listed another individual with different aspirations and goals with some against one or another, or even against ourselves. It had only been a few days since Glenn's swearing in his president, and he was already feeling the exhaust exhaustion of the bureaucracy found within the federal government. Lamont, Lane, Lang, Gore continued. Al, just wait a minute. You'll wear yourself out going through all that. Let's take a minute to think about all this. Look at all those names you look, listed off already, and you're only on the 12th, one of, 12th letter of the alphabet. Does that tell you something, Glenn asked? We're losing most of our budget on the White House aides, Gore asked, or said, giving Glenn a good laugh out of it. Well, you're not entirely wrong, Gore. Think about it. Our campaign was built on several foundations, but all of these names are adapted to the last president's set. If they, continued on as we, if they continue on as they have been, they will never be able to adapt to the administration's goals. We fought so hard to get where we are, and we just can't let all this slow us down. The people are suffering out there, Al. We want, they want progress, and Hunt and Judd and Lamont are not going to be the ones that get us out there. The vice president nodded his head slowly into president's statement. What will you have me do then, John? Gore asked. Well, firstly, that list there might give you a headache. Might want to get rid of it. Instead, let's come up with another list. A list of people who have had, who have our dream, who want to get out there and bring this country farther than it has ever before, Al. We fight for America. We need to find those who will do the same with us. With a smile and handshake, Gore left the room to handle that president's request. I'm going to assume this is like Al Gore or Gore Sr. or something like that. Who do we have for VP? Head of government's Al Gore Sr. There it is. Okay, cool. Uh... Daily pickle power gain, resource efficiency gain. Please give me one moment because my cat is outside my room and is meowing very quite loudly. Oh, well, look, 10 billion in reserves. Don't mind if we do. <gasps> look at that national debt. Ooh. 
Oh, Binky. That cat wants to always want to come in when he's outside and always wants to leave when he's outside. But it is 69. Nice. 1969, I should say. And we're doing okay. Doing, definitely doing okay besides not having support in Congress, especially the Senate. But whatever. So we're going to make sure that our Ds are as unified as possible. If we might be able to split the NPP and really actually work with the center because we might have goals that are very well aligned towards each other. So, and eventually, I'm sure England is going to go to go to war with. Oh, she's getting older. Uh, Scotland, hopefully. Douglas Wimberley. Oh, cool. And crossing the new frontier. America is a nation founded by explorers and pioneers, and a nation that has lost its way and missed the troubled times. To defeat the evils of fascism, we must show the world that democracy is the way of the future, a stable bedrock upon which mankind will make its way to the stars. Our journey will not be an easy one, but such is the nature of exploration. Columbus was met with nothing but doubters until the Spanish gave him the resources he needed, and he was a novice sailor. We are assailed with the many skeptics as well, but we have the brain power and resources of the greatest country in the world at our disposal. President Glenn shall lead our nation and our species into a brave new world. Yes. Not one more failure, please. No more. Look at that. Minus 40 billion. Glenn looking above and beyond. During the election cycle, President Glenn offered the U.S. a more reasonable and connected answer to the choice of leadership for the country. He promised to unite the country after years of division to bring each citizen closer together, to help those who need it most, and to bring the country out farther than it has ever reached before. Having gone through enough time to prove himself in the presidential seat, Reports indicate that the administration is most definitely focusing on advancing. However, have they forgotten the rest of the campaign promises? Although there has been no official statements, many White House reports show a continuous focus towards the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, with recent actions in the West Wing allowing for nearly double the staff held in NASA before, as well as stark increases towards the program's funding. Furthermore, many analysts have noticed a steady increase in the ties, especially within the congressional branch as well, as roughly half of the senatorial meetings and hearings have been in regards to the aviation industry and the country's possible future in the exploration of space. However, it has been noted that President Glenn's administration has not given any public attention towards recent events. As only the the only official willing to give a statement was Howard Metzenbaum, the president's chief of staff, who said the president has promised America, Americans the possibility of growth and prosperity in manners they have not seen before, and the administration is working diligently in an effort to ensure this happens. Reporters are on standby to investigate the situation and developments that come in. Do they not see us trying? Cool, very cool. Half over half a billion and or over half a trillion in GDP, which is nice. And that small number, it's probably going to balloon up very quickly. Slaughterhouse Five. One book that enjoyed overwhelming success during the anti-war years was Kurt Vonnegut's classic Slaughterhouse Five. This book's protagonist, Bela Pilgrim, is captured by the Wehrmacht during the defense of Scotland and is held in a slaughterhouse in the southeast of London. Billy is a poorly trained soldier who has come to dislike war, refusing to fight for his country. During an Allied bombing of the city, his acquaintance and his fellow soldier, Roland Weary, dies of infection and shortly before his demise, he blames his death on Billy. He escapes the slaughterhouse, and the novel proceeds to his near-death experience in a plane crash where he was abducted by aliens. These aliens, the Tralmafodorians, taught Billy their outlook on life, death, and fate, causing Billy to become an orator. Critics condemned the disorderly structure of the book, but praised its clear anti-war message. Many readers appreciated the way Vongut included his own war experiences in the novel, quickly making the book a bestseller. The book itself was printed in multiple European languages, but was banned throughout Europe shortly after its publication. Through the book's anti-war, though... Oh, through the book's anti-war message, one can see Von Gut's disdain for the Reich and the Japanese, and so it goes on. Cool. And we're sm slowly, slowly demobilizing just because, well, it, it just has to happen. Because we had that for two years. The RFK, hey, look, look, look at that. Reformed Siberian Socialist Workers Republic. Okay, so I said earlier that I would do something about this to get rid of this stuff. But you know what? If they're already going to go to maybe kill each other, yeah, down here. I don't want to get involved. I really don't want to do any sort of consequence stuff like we already did before. Oh, wow. Russia. You actually took Onega and then some. Zykov. Zykov. Okay. Military district, of course, under B Batov. That's all crazy. And men. I love men. Hmm. And Mami Shuli. Mami Shuli. Mama Shuli? Mama Shuli. Mami Shuli. Cool. Military officer, no. Yeah, once we do this, we're, we're, I'm planning on spending a lot of money. Because we're not building that many factories up. Uh, can we actually build any more? Not, I mean, yeah, technically, yes. We'll build up in Vermont for more civilian factories, because that's fine with me, but... Crossing the new frontier, why not? Not one more failure. No, not one failure more. A thunderous storm is overtaking the night sky across the state of Maryland. Great flashes of lightning and the booming cannons of the thunder-coated continue to rage and took hold of the dark clouds above the White House, while showers took, overtook the streets and drowned out the vegetation of the nation's capital there. President John Glenn slept soundly, warmed by the covers of the bed, and his loving Anna in the dark room he called home throughout his presidency. Uh, 
Raum Farher, Ein, zwei, and drei hitting the surface now, Kolna said, as the craft touched down upon the grey wasteland, with a great blue and green sphere floated thousands upon thousands of miles behind him. Honored by his leadership, Kolna was declared to be the first to take the step, and thus the proud German floated softly to the surface of the moon. He turned to grab something out of the landing craft and walked towards several places for Germania to the stars and beyond, he said as he planted the flag adorned with a black swastika to forever stare back at his home planet. There, millions of Germans celebrated across the Reich, taking part in a celebration to honor the glory, the wonder, and the majesty of the Reich's power. Across the seas, however, Americans within the capital were devastated by the events of the past few hours. Many women stood crying onto one each other's to another one another's soldiers. Projects project leads cursed and kicked, going so far as vandalizing the work stations in anger. Hours felt like days, and with every passing moment the reper repercussions of the failure became apparent. Projects were left in dark rooms, shelves. Workers were leaving far earlier than they were scheduled to, and new reports of budget slashes came with every passing hour. Tears stained the once beautiful or successful organization's pride. John, are you all right? Anne asked as she shook her husband. The president rocketed back up within his bed, and cold streams of sweat journeyed down his forehead, burning his eyes. He looked as if his w wife's worried expressions while he wiped away the sweat, thinking about everything that had transpired within his dreams. The president realized what had happened, and did only the logical action in his mind next. He gave a large embrace to his wife. We won't fail again, Annie. No, no, no. And the dream never died? Launch space programs will be available, but the power of the atom? Give them more public support? Taxpayers and the military will expect to see benefits from this. Oh. Or, closing the empathy deficit. Work on pension reform. Let's go and do the Dream Never Dies. NASA these days is a sad show of what it used to be during the glorious days where we won the race into orbit. Funding was all but dried up, and the majority of its facilities were already decrypted after years of neglect. The German victory broke America's will to continue the space race, but not NASA. The few employees left the fr from the early days still believe in its founding vision and are ready to do the hard work of bringing NASA back to its full cap capability. We've not forgotten how the Nazis sold the lunar landing with the swastika in 62, and we will not forget our unleashed or unfinished business on the moon. It's time to catch up in the race for the stars. Absolutely. Let's come over here. Oh! Oh, we did Cypher stuff. Cool! Oh god, Jet Propulsion. How do I get more research points? Raise a spending cap. We might do that too. Oh, look at that. Uh, let's see. Do we have Germany done? Nope. 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 Don't want to deal with this, so... Good. Bye. Oh, we should probably finish this too. Computer hacking? Sure, why not? And get some more research. Including this stuff. More APC stuff. Awesome. Oh man, we're so close to paying off that debt. We're so close. Oh, I'm a... Less than eight billion until we start spending a lot. We're gonna be spending a lot of money. Oh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be glorious. Actually, over here. Uh, let's see. Increase their budget. Forty-five percent. And I was recommended when I looked up the guide how to do this. You don't necessarily have to keep increasing the budget. I mean, the starting budget we had is okay. So until we actually need to really use it, we don't have to spend too much. So. Broken Arrow, the sum of all fears, top secret. Approximately 40 minutes ago, a B-52 Stratofortress on a standard airborne alert patrol out of the naval air station Selfoss in Iceland radioed a distress signal and accompanying encrypted message. The message indicated that the aircraft's vertical stabilizer had partially broken off and the crew would be forced to ditch into the Norwegian Sea. Of Norwegian sea. Above the aircraft was one Mark 28 thermonuclear weapon, and as such, the incident is being classified as Broken Arrow. There is a loose nuclear bomb out there. Given known weather conditions and established USAF safety protocols, we believe that the crew is most likely alive and floating approximately 115 miles to the southwest of Jan Mayan Island. The wreckage of the craft, and potentially the accompanying weapon, will most likely still be visible from the air. There are no indications that the German military is presently aware of the situation, but given known German radar capabilities, it is overwhelmingly likely that this will not be the case within 24 hours time. We recommend that relevant Navy and Air Force elements be immediately tasked rescue and retrieval operations. So ordered. Yeah, mm, you know what, maybe we'll throw some radar over here too. Just in case. Oh, that's not very much, is it? Oh, we can build up this too? Oh, not. oh, wait, hold on. Oh, you're actually my puppet. Oh, you Hamilton, okay. Uh, the German center flotilla. Per uh, photographs from our keyhole reconnaissance satellites, the Kriegsmarine has dispatched a sizable flotilla of minesweepers, submarine rescue ships, and even cruisers to the approximate location of the downed B-52. Additionally, the Luftwaffe aircraft have been detected in the Norwegian Sea by multiple Iceland-based radar stations. We believe that they've detected the B-52's crash and tend to salvage the wreckage and the nuclear weapon, along with any survivors. This is an absolute critical threat to our national security and technological capabilities. However, we can stop this. The CIA possesses certain background channels within the German government. We advise that a secret message be sent to the German leadership at once, demanding that they halt the flotilla so that we can rescue the crew. To do otherwise would be a blow to our national security and prestige, although it may decrease the tensions, which we do. Hmm. Withdraw from our crisis? And pass. Uh, tell the Germans to back off. Because we did that as RFK once. We told them to back off, and then we backed off, which wasn't probably a great idea, but whatever. How do we get more points? Oh, payloads? Oh, increase the amount of research points we get from successful missions. Preparedness for unmanned missions? 
Uh, I heard those were okay. Civilian. Oh, we were cutting the civilian budget too. Uh, you know what? At this point, we're not going to cut anymore. I might actually spend more. Let's go spend more then. Uh, the Germans fought. Hey! According to the Keyhole Satellite Data and our radar stations on Iceland, the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine assets that the Germans had been moving into the Norwegian Sea have withdrawn. It is clear from this information that the German government has succeeded, or acceded, to our demand, and they do not intend on intercepting our own rescue and salvage efforts. Evidently, they were intimidated by our resolve and did not wish to escalate the mission situation. Our combined Navy and Air ta Task Force is still en route to the crash site. With any luck, all personnel involved will be safe at home within the next 48 to 72 hours. Excellent work, everyone. Nice. Because we're really still disunited, which is not good. Mm, I, I, I want to spend a little bit more. I just want to spend a little bit more, man. Conser uh, less. Hold on. So we are currently liberal democracy, conservative democracy, liberal and conservative. We're not social. So liberal democracy, conservative democracy. Ooh, I want to spend. I want to spend more. Eh, I don't know why that's still available. Cause it doesn't make sense why it should be, but whatever. Computer hacking, cool. Go with computerized Kraken. Nice. No? Okay. We'll get more of that stuff. Cool. The dream never died. The dawn of a new day, John Glenn had become used to frequent back and forth trips between Washington and Houston. The new NASA headquarters called for some big decisions quite often nowadays, and the president was always happy to drop by and lend a hand. After all, these were the opening days of a new age of American space exploration. Today, however, that might all come to an end. No longer would the president have to hold NASA's hand in person. Rather, the organization could be managed with only a, column, a filled coffer. Today, the president would meet with his administrator, James Webb, to formulate a comprehensive plan for NASA's future. Sipping into the meeting room, no Glenn noticed that it was empty, save Webb and an intern or some such that he did not know. He did not know. Hello, James. Open Glenn. I, I hear you've already hammered out what you think would be best. Regardless, I'm always happy to help you. The administrator smiled warmly, sitting in his chair. Well, John, you can say that. Take a seat, he said. I'll tell you about it. The president took the seat opposite Webb. Well, he said, give me the quick and dirty. NASA, today, is pursuing so many projects and moving in so many direction, directions at once, it is simply unsustainable. So now every program we fund will have to cross your desk first. Each program has different benefits and each has a price. The way I figure it, as much as you and I would want to, we can't afford to pursue every project that might be worth a god dang. And not only because it would be expensive, but because it would anger the public. People find that the space program to be a novelty, not a necessity. Too much money poured into it and America will grow very weary of the stars. So your job will be organizing all these programs, replied Glenn, while I make sure that the other areas of government get adequate attention and that we don't bankrupt the country in the process. Yeah. Well, what are we waiting for? Who cares? Spend money. Look at the, look at the debt. We've gotten literally, completely legitly, like, like I didn't use any console commands to lower the debt. You saw me pretty much lower the debt, like, slash, slash, slash. So we have got maybe some money to spend. Surviving the cosmos, the new NASA, pathway to the uh, sky. Because I do want to do power the atom eventually, and then do next-gen delivery. The arrows program, unmanned missions give us an increased war support as well as bust to both rocket construction and air range will be locked. Unlocked. A siphon funding to siphon the military budget for NASA. I kind of like that. I really kind of do. Uh, but we will probably want to close em empathy gap. But let's do the new NASA first. NASA has been left adrift and rudderless for years thanks to the short-sighted views of previous administrations since we lost the space race. Cutting funding and pushing manpower to other areas. But that was just the first battle, not the whole war. There's much to discover among the stars, so much to explore, that we shouldn't be confining ourselves to be simply second best. With massive new funding, we can rebuild the space program and push past all the boundaries. It's time to go where no man, no, where no man has gone before. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm speaking really fast. Just because I want to get as much done in this uh, episode as possible. Boom! There we go. America. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Under Glenn. President Glenn. We have now finally reduced the debt, the national debt, to nothing. Feels good to be American in this timeline right now. Whew. All right. Now we can spend money. Now we can spend some serious money. We can increase construction too right now. But really, we don't really need to do that. Actually, there was a little thing, I think when I was like reading the reddit that if you put a nuclear reactor in every state that you get a special event you know we should try that we should really try that you know what screw it I don't know how long is it gonna take I'm gonna put a nuclear reactor in every single area we can you have a nuclear war oh oh no 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 I forgot you know what we got rid of the depth before the oil crisis hit so not bad I don't think that's that's, that's pretty good in my mind so obviously we're gonna do all the coast first because that's where we can build once we get some more technology, then we can start building in the Midwestern states and the West Coast states, or just West Western states, really. Uh, so that would be great. And don't forget Hawaii. Hawaii is still a state, I'm pretty sure. Cryptographic engineering. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, five-ish. The Stonewall bus. It starts with a sudden blackout. 25 patrons of the Stonewall stop and stare at the sudden dark. It's one. 
1.20 a.m. outside. And bartenders reach for the panic buttons as they try to calm down the customers. Customers, the four undercover officers are cursed as they fiddle with the switches, and the lights flicker back to life. The few who realize what's about to happen begin pushing their way through the crowd, but the mor moral squad have already locked down the window exit and are marching through the doors, flashlights in hand as they bust the biggest gay establishment in New York. The raid doesn't meet with a receptive crowd, to say the least. As officers leave those in women's clothing to the toilet, many resist. It's common knowledge that those who get arrested by the moral squad as cross-dressing men don't make it out with bruises, spit-drenched faces, manhandling. Men with faces lean and caked up with makeup rest their with their cuffs and spit on the captors. None of the bar bar's patrons have made it this far in a world which mostly despises them without getting a little rough around the edges, and when the man pushes them around, they push right back. By the time the ra raid concludes, about 150 people are under arrest, but more are gathered in the late-night darkness of the Big Apple, and a storm is brewing that they cannot, uh, that they cannot be contained. We shall overcome. Uh, let's do that one. And then... Oh, yeah, we have... Oh, I can't build... I can't build a nuclear reactor in Guantanamo Bay? Come on. What? Why? Why? It just Castro's on the island. That's okay, right? We're building a lot of nukes. We shall overcome the greatest LGBT ride in the history of the U.S. It begins with a logistics problem. Uh, oh, the Iberian divorce. Oh, that is not good. Pie. P e p i e. Uh, the morals police have grabbed 28 cases of beer and 19 kegs of hard liquor, where the patrol vans occupied elsewhere they have nowhere to put it. And so they keep the patrons on lockdown as the wagons arrive, far too slowly for the police operation. The patrons, of course, are under understandably upset, and those few not under arrest quickly join the growing crowds gathered outside the building. Many of them know that the once they end die, so too does the living, breathing heart of the gay culture in the greatest city in the world. They have to, they have everything to lose. As mafia members and patrons are loaded onto the wagons, many are still struggling. A lone voice breaks out. We shall overcome a protest song written for the uh, South African War. That's from South Africa? Huh. I, I've heard of that, uh, actually, quite a bit, though. Uh, finds receptive ear in another angry crowd facing another unwinnable fight. Growing cheers, growling sh uh, shouts of gay power echo from the crowds which are swelled to bursting in the streets. Storme del Valle falls to the force, struggling against four officers, and all hell breaks loose. Records are unclear what hap exactly happens next. In a wave of anger, the mob pushes over police wagons, hurls bricks at the officers reaching a stone wall, presses garbage against the broken windows. Many of the most repressed members of the gay community lead the riot, the drag queens and the street boys leading to a wild, wild charge. Silvio Rivera, notable drag queen, will remember it as the greatest night of her life. The doors of the inn are broken open with a battering ram. Officers inside prepare for fire at last stand, and then the police trucks arrive. Fire to the fuel. Whew. Hey, at least it's escalating. Escalating. That's kind of fun. And the kick, kick lines and tear gas. Insurrection in Oman. Get more GDP because we need that for later. The initial reaction is one of rage. Bloody officers or officers bloody and coated with garbage and in wrecked with violence. And the fairies did it. The fairies. Violence exploded on the streets as police officers take the law into their own hands and they hammer the rage into, onto the defenseless. The mob arrayed against them is far too gone to care. They form the rough outline of a cabaret chorus line and begin to sing. Their voices are pierced in the late night, and the police have had enough of being needled. They rush to the line. Men and women get hammered with nightsticks as bedlam spreads to the surrounding streets. Crowds run around police officers laughing gaily like warriors in the light of burning cars. By the time the riots come to a halt, Christopher Street is blocked, half the cars are, on it over, are overturned, and every garbage can for a mile has been emptied into the street. Witnesses describe an odd beauty to the, to the refuse strewn street like a river broken toys. Of course, the streets aren't the only things getting breaking the news. All through the next day, crowds gawk at the burnt out shell of Stonewall, and when the next night comes, they are joined by songwriters, poets, activists, and tourists washing down the streets in a tide of exuberant energy. Allen Ginsberg notes, on the way back, the guys there were so beautiful they lost that wounded look that fags all had 10 years ago. An incredible sight. Wow. I didn't imagine I actually would, like, there'd be three events for that, but okay, cool. Ah, that debt. I'm sorry, I can't get over that. The best and brightest, I'll give, oh yeah, I want those research points. So, there was a time when applications to join NASA had numbered it outnumbered the available jobs by a factor of 5 to 1, and the best and brightest of America would excitedly jump to join the space program now. It's hard to fill all the positions, as there are many, much more money and prestige in the private sector for boring jobs like financial analysis and designing cars. If we are to get back into the space race, then we need to get them back. Better wages is just part of the plan. We need to make it so that the people willingly come to bring new ideas, new perspectives. They need to know that they are going to make our world a better place by exploring the cosmos. And then we'll do some stuff for, you know, removing the deficit of empathy. Then we'll do that there. Jesus Christ, this is so much money. Oh my goodness. I wonder how, how high we can get that GDP up before the oil crisis hits. I'm thinking I might actually keep... Uh, part of me wants to say I want to keep some of money in the liquid reserves first. Just so that when the oil crisis hits and we hit a big old, you know, deficit. That I can still pay it off for a while, but nah. President John Glenn walked into the newly renovated manned spacecraft center in Houston, Texas. Stepping through the sparkling glass doors and trailed by several black-clad agents of the Secret Service, the astronaut-turned-president found himself greeted by an old friend, James Webb, administrator of NASA. Hello, James, said the president, smiling. The administrator reciprocated with a smile of his own. A gosh darn fine facility you let us build, John, he said, and by God, a god dang fine path is going to car for us. Let me show you around. We've already got several new products in the works. 
the president, and his entourage of guards followed the administrator Webb through the vast halls of the new Houston facility, pointing out new projects along the way. So down here we have planning rooms for future programs and technologies, namely the Orion Project, the Diana Project, and the Integral Launch and Reentry Vehicle. The president shrugged. I'm a bit out of the loop these days, James. Why don't you fill me in? Well, Diana is the current plan for another attempt at the moon. In theory, we can figure out where Apollo went wrong and use that knowledge in future missions. The reentry vehicle, or the ILRV, is the current plan for a reasonable space plane that we could use to get things into orbit at lower cost, like satellites to spot on the crowds and the NIPs. Orion is, well, we want to launch heavy loads into space by nuclear by using nuclear weapon as propulsion. And what's this all leading up to, if you don't mind me asking? The administrator smiled, turning around and walked towards a seemingly nondescript door at the far end of the hall. I was hoping you'd ask that. Reaching the blank door, he opened it and entered, followed by President Glenn. Inside, the room was poorly lit, but filled with bulky computers and desks, all manned by busy men and women. On the walls, illuminated maps of the Red Planet load. Terrain and topographical maps of potential landing sites. Utopia Planetia, Valles Maraneus, Elysium Plan Planetia and several others. We're already planned? We're already planning? Come on, John, replied Webb. We've always been planning. It's just been a matter of funding. President Glenn inhaled deeply, gathering his thoughts. Well, he began, you have as much of that as you need, and more. The Red Planet awaits. Ooh, yeah, increase the budget. 39%. So, approval rating is going to go down again, again, again. We have over a billion for, for NASA. Is that it? Don't mind if I do. Oh, wait, hold on. What is this? Oh, reserve fleet. I want to read that stuff first before we do anything else. Strike groups. I can't hear anything. There we go. Now I can hear stuff. Maybe my ears are going bye-bye. Welcome to Mission Control. The current project is undecided with 0% prepared. We have zero invested, uh, zero dollars invested. Increase the preparedness of the mission by investing more money into the program. Upgrading it would ensure it as safe as it can be. A successful mission will result in the rise of public approval, while a failure could very well kill the program. Invest in the program. Our unmanned mission. Huh. Oh man, invest into the Minerva program? They're both unmanned? I'm not really sure which one we want to do first. What is Minerva? Because I want to do it both. Oh, expand the payloads. Yeah, that's right. That's cool, yeah. I guess we don't... I want to keep this open just so we can see if we can increase our unity between the R's and D's. So, here's what we're going to do. Low Earth orbit to test our technology and get reacclimated to the cosmos. Launch satellites into orbit, giving us some encryption and decryption boosts. I'm going to do this one because it's going to get us back into the into the swing of things. And we've got enough money to do so. So, spying on the treaty ports, that's fine. We get less decryption for now, but that's fine, whatever. Still not bad. We're going to do the best we possibly can. And hopefully not mess things up. Hopefully. We're going to get 0.96, not bad. The best and the brightest. Hey, so send fire improvements. I don't really care about technology too much. Where we're going, we probably don't need that big of an army, to be honest with you guys. Like... We never got any army XP to really talk about, so. Uh, oh, okay, let's get some more of this then. Let's see, and we'll throw it right on. Eh, go and get the next tank. No. We've got a new consulate. Ooh. Go and grab this one. Why not? So, we've been approached by the government of West Siberia once again, this time asking to establish a consulate in Washington. This would bring our countries even closer and would be a good way to improve relations between our two states. However, this may show that we're taking sides in Russia. And if we want to keep our neutral stance or show more interest in another government, we may want to reject the consulate. Still, trade will be able to facilitate between our two nations even more than before, giving us access to a larger amounts of oil and more influence in the region. Building a consulate would no doubt become very beneficial for us. Still, there's always be repercussions for getting too nice with the West Siberians. Allow the West Siberians to establish a consulate. I just want to trade, man. Can we trade? Can I, like... Get my GDP higher. Because we're spending a buttload, a big buttload, on civilian spending. Oh my goodness, so much. Other expenditures, yeah. Just, I don't care how much money we're making right now, just put it in the GDP. If we can end this campaign getting a trillion dollars in GDP, that would make me so happy. I mean, my goodness, that'd be so awesome. Oh, look, the, I'm, mm, I don't know, I'm going to put my money so far. It's either on the Western Russia or the Divine Mandate of Siberia. Because, even though these guys are killing each other... Considering reports, the submerged exile. Oh boy, oh boy, a lone wolf. Oh no. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next one, in which we did this. Siphon funding. I want to do that too. The cost of remissions will decrease. That's good. Let's closing the empathy uh, deficit first. Although our administration's aims lie towards heavens, it's within our responsibility to remember our duties at the ground level. With that, the other half of our focus ought to be on the state of the U.S.'s social welfare. Consistently, our government has overlooked the needs of our nation's neediest and most downtrodden souls. Thus, we must equitably to lift the spirits residing in its workers and veterans of America who have been so greatly beaten down in order to secure not only a more stable nation, but as a caring one as well. Besides, if we manage to please American citizens with enough of our work towards economic security, they will be more approving of our desire to fund NASA, right? 
To start, our administration will work to re reform pension programs for the retired elderly population of the U.S. Regularly, their hard work has not been paid off in their retirement, leaving them mistreated in care, but our administration will work to change that, and I will be right back. All right, my friends, sorry about that, but I had to go pee. But regardless, we have the Hunter's Quarry Diplocrisis.250.desk. Heaven forbid they had called our bluff. So apparently the Japanese did something to us. I wish we had, like, descriptions for these events. But the Japanese kind of, like, were escalating the situation, and then we escalated it, and then now they've kind of backed off, which is a good thing, which happened to, with the Germans earlier. But you know what? I should have listened to my own advice because I kept increasing money here, kind of, and now the approval rating is 21% for NASA. Uh, that's not good. That's not good, as we're trying to do mission control stuff now. So I'm done investing money. 20% is not good. I mean, we still have no debt for now, but man, come on. I just want what's best for everyone, whether they like it or not, you know? Uh, but there's, I still didn't get to some of the comments from yesterday's video. Uh, for example, someone recommends I play as, or play in, the Dreams of Poland mod, which sounds cool. I probably will eventually. Play in the Star Wars Executor mod for Hoi 4, which sounds like a lot of fun as well. Which, hopefully I will do with someday as well. I'm too worried about the, maybe the music copyright and stuff, but that's probably the biggest reason why I haven't touched it yet. Let's see, we're working on guns, let's got some advanced anti tank equipment. Let's see, take out Japan, we could have right there, actually. Okay, so this isn't exactly where we left off, it is technically, but I did play this off screen a little bit, and the Japanese did go to war with me, as well as earlier when we had the incident between us and the Germans. I tried it again, and they actually did go to war with us, so I don't want to deal with going to war, man. I just want to do space stuff. Man, come on. So, it was actually cool, just, uh, we were actually fighting the Japanese, at least I was fighting the Japanese off screen. They were tearing up my ships, I was tearing up some of their frigates and con uh, corvettes and stuff like that. But I'm like, you know what, this isn't going to work out very well for us, but we're closing the empathy deficit. My fellow Americans, I stand before you today, not with a dream, but with a sobering, sobering, waking knowledge of the injustice faced by millions of our fellow citizens. I've heard it said of me that I am but a stargazing dreamer, ready to leave behind the worries of this world for dreams of the sky. Rest assured, this cannot be farther from the truth. While I myself and most members of my administration remain convinced of mankind's future among the stars, I am not, and never have been blind to the fact that to, that to reach for the celestial plane, America must utilize its resources in such a way to maximize human potential. With a sick and impoverished population, the U.S. will never be the best it can be. Those of you who followed my campaign for office may recall my promise of true reform for true Americans, because the true American is not some executive sitting in his mansion and hatching ploys to increase his already considerable fortune, nor is it the woman who bars her children from sharing a school with those of a different appearance or creed. The true American is the old lady who gives her last penny to a child, whose stomach grumbles with hunger, the man who volunteers of his time to, his, to patrol his burrow for criminals, those who stay with their sick or dying, those who wish or who care about this great American community. This nation has a def defic deficiency of empathy towards the downtrodden, one that can only be removed through such a sense of community. Today, my administration is proud to announce the work towards one of the ca our capstone promises. True pension reform. No longer will the old have to live in poverty or burden their children so they cannot work. A grand, grand speech. No money yet, huh? Makes sense. Uh, we, so we did that one. We can do our neediest, our downtrodden. So we've done this, we've done that. Surviving the cosmos and increase preparedness. I was recommending maybe we go down this way as well, just so we can get to the other project, federal pilot reactors. That sounds really cool. Subdivided construction. Nuclear stockpile goes up, as well as public support, which is not bad. Mm, a fragile piece. Nuclear detonation and stuff. Let's see. Quiet the boosters, men over machines. Heat shields will be available to research. Base preparedness will go up for unmanned missions. Enhance algorithms. Up project... Day Dallas. Man mission designed to explore our orbit, giving us increased base preparation for all missions. Ooh, what do you think is better? Is men or machines? Or expand on explorer? I think I think men or machines is probably the better one to do. Pathway to the skies. Siphon funding. Human stress tests. Oh, we can do rework in the capsule. We gain some research points. Or re rework in the suit. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and not. Uh, let's uh, raise the public support. We could probably do that. Power the atom. To solely focus on atomic power through the lens of the bombing of Pearl Harbor is to miss a uh, forest for trees. Nuclear energy, if harnessed correctly, could provide nearly limitless energy for millions of Americans still suffering from blackouts or interrupted de deliveries of coal or oil. It is high time we redouble our scientific efforts to harness the power of the atom for both its peaceful and warlike applications to succor our people and instill fear in our enemies. Cool. Very cool. I see, we're still building ourselves up. Uh, maybe civilian factories are okay. I believe we are, yeah, we're building all these nuclear reactors, which is awesome. Civilian budget boosts. Start building one. I 
I mean, we can build up other areas. We we have built up Alaska, so make sure that they have enough infrastructure as well, which is nice. But we're going to build up infrastructure right there. Come on. There we go. And have a bunch of uh, civilian factories. Go ahead. Uh, increase spending. You know what? Let's increase spending so we want more political power. So right now, let's see. 26%, not bad. Bring in technicians. I want more research points. Oh my goodness, look at this. We have zero research points. Stranger alloys. I want to say I want to keep investing in this. But it's going to hurt our budget. Do we have enough for the budget? Probably. We have only 68% preparedness, which is not good enough for, for me. So, do that. Keep getting more research points. I like research points. I don't know. Maybe that's a bad thing to do. Maybe that's a good thing to do. But it seems like a smart thing to do. It's a good to invest research into stuff. But it seems like we might be running out of money eventually. Hmm. Oh, look, we can do probe AI, increase preparedness for unmanned mission. Is this an unmanned mission? I can't I can't remember. Or Orion. Oh, stronger alloys for Orion, Minerva, Eros, and Daedalus missions, but also slightly increase their budgets. Uh, let's see, we are currently at 26%. Does that hurt our budget support? No, it does not. That's fine. We'll just use that one first. We can probe stuff, but mm, we'll see what happens. We have 11 research points. Oman has defeated Oman. Good job, Oman. Special forces training. Money. Into the GDP. Okay, we'll do it again. Because why not? Ooh, there goes Egypt. Oh, boy. As long as Iraq does not capitulate, that's okay with me. Oh, look, Israel. Oh, we don't kind of like each other. Mr. Begin. Can we get involved in this? Oh, we still have our planes. No, it doesn't look like we can, which is fine with me, but... The 1969 World Series. Happy 1969, my friends. The 1969 MLB season was drawing to a close as the dominant Baltimore Orioles, American League champions, squared off against the National Champion League's the New York Mets. Both teams had swept their opponent in their league championship games and were set to face off in the, this world's this year's World Series. The 1969 Baltimore Orioles squad had been considered one of the greatest baseball teams in MLB history, led by slugger Frank Robinson and pitcher Jim Palmer as a, two, as a team won 109 games and lost only 53. On the other hand, the Mets achieved their first ever winning season this year, led by coach Yogi Berra and pitcher Nolan Ryan. The mid-October matchup would go down as one of the most shocking upsets in the history of baseball. The talented Baltimore team routed the Mets 4-1 on October 11th. But the Mets stormed back and won the final four games of the championship, defeating the Orioles 5-3 tonight in front of 57,000 fans. The team was quickly dubbed the Miracle Mets for the outstanding play against a formidable rival. It is the Mets' first World Series pennant. A series for the history books. Or memory for the history books. Ooh, what is that? An Anianya? Oh. Oh, Sudan is falling apart. Oh, all these places in the world are falling apart. But hopefully not America. So we're done with this stuff for now. Mm, did we finish up here? Yeah, we did. I think I clicked on this earlier, so let's just do this one, just because I thought I clicked on that and we didn't get research, apparently, so. Power of the Atom, very nice. Let's see. A next gem delivery system? Next gen, not gem, but gen. Unmanned missions giving an increase to war support. The Aeros problem sounds like it's probably a good thing to do. Decisions for purchasing additional uranium from our allies. We're, we are the only rifle nuclear power. Well, just in case, let's do our neediest. In drafting the bill for pension reform for the country, the administration has discussed a possible expansion of de de developing legislation. In particular, we've realized that a large group of good yet pain, pain people that have gone overlooked by the government and the people of the U.S., the disabled citizens of America, consistently. Disabled Americans overcome the difficulties of their conditions, yet receive no care for the lengths of which they go through to provide for themselves and their families. Our administration seeks to reverse, reverse this just injustice, and will reach out to the disabled to bring them a brighter day by offering greater pensions towards them and their families. Furthermore, increased benefits will provide care for the military veterans who, through fighting for their, our nation, were forced to come home with de debilitating injuries, particularly from the Second World War, and will seek to provide for their families as well, right? Besides, it's what Annie would want, right? Cool. More pension reform, hopefully get a little bit more support, because budget-wise, we're doing great. Daggers on all sides. Oh boy. Oh boy. Across the Pacific, sir, our agents have stated the highest probability for the location of the Japanese Empire stationing of nuclear capabilities would most likely be in the various Pacific Islands, such as Wake or Midway, while the mainland would contain them at the cities of Kushiro and Hachinoe. Nelson Rockefeller said to the concerning expression worn by President Glenn, Regarding the Germans, sir, they would most likely have spread out their nuclear weapons across multiple fronts they have to deal with. However, our main concern would most likely be within the secret coverage within their French puppet or even the Northern Sea in Wilhelmshaven to launch into the Atlantic and prepare, pre preparing a nuclear strike by sea. 
The reports laid out by the Secretary of State did not smother the worries held by the President of the U.S., right Pole's nuclear capabilities. The years of tension did not play the favor of peace and common manhood within the enemy's eyes as far as the President was concerned. However, at the years of experience piloting aircraft taught John anything, it was not to panic in the middle of a crisis unless you seek to crash and burn. Another lesson taught to John Glenn during his time as a pilot was a simple rule, but an effective one. The man with the bigger gun is going to win the fight. With air capabilities already being improved with the funding for NASA, there remains but one obstacle ahead for the nuclear arms race, nuclear power itself. Glenn picked up his office phone and spoke into it. Hello, ma'am. Could you patch me through to Javits? Javits. Absolutely, sir. The defense budget more than allows the research program to go through, and we could possibly coordinate with them to work towards a greater missile supply. And about the nuclear power, the report we've just received measures the approval rating to be considerable, meaning that you seem to have to go on the project, sir. How shall we proceed, Mr. President? For the sake of peace, Mr. Secretary. Building nuclear reactors will help raise our nuclear stockpile. Our nuclear stockpile society development will begin to improve. Oh, we are already on top of that, man. We are ready to go, 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 go. Let's see. Because of RFK, we have a little bit more poverty rate. Modern research facilities looking... Hmm. Nuclear stockpile. Slowly improving to a month. Massive stockpile. Non-nuclear, single weapons, annual cost. Big oil versus nuclear power. The oil must flow. Uh, let's see. Massive stockpile. We have a massive stockpile. Annual cost, 50 billion. Not enough. Not enough. I swear to God, we're going to make it big, 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 big booms, my friends. For over half a century, the world ran on one resource, oil. Even today, petroleum is a vital for the economy to keep the country's cars, ships, trains, and planes moving to refine into chemicals, plastics, and synthesized rubber, and to burn them in power plants to provide electricity into millions, and natural gas to provide heating. All of modern life depends on the oil industry, but now... President Glenn is moving aggressively on his plan to build nuclear reactors everywhere, to power the nation with atomic power through the National Nuclear Commission. That is an increasingly worrying concern for the boards and stockholders of the big oil companies like Exxon, Texaco, Mobile, or Mobile, and Standard Oil California. If America is less reliant on oil products for electricity and heating, then a huge section of the market will disappear nearly overnight, and they'll lose millions if not billions of dollars. Analysts predict that it would be years if not decades for nuclear power to become cost-effective, and the oil companies had banked on that. Then Glenn came in, subsidizing the oil building of reactors, and the price of nuclear energy is dropping fast. Soon it will be cheaper to build it. Expen big expensive reactor then deal with the minimal maintenance cost it would be to keep prospecting and shipping oil to refiners and to power plants that's the last thing the big oil companies needed of course they will never say that it was for the bottom line no instead they'll be talking about the possible dangers of radiation and meltdowns the security of oil reserves in texas or the use of government funds to subsidize something that the private market would be better off to handle big oil working through shell companies are going to fund glenn's opponents such as mpp we're not as keen on expanding billions for, to build reactors all over america anything to save the industry that has powered america and the world this far into the 20th century the oil must flow our public support oh come on we'll go down voters and oil and gas producing states disapprove Man, we're trying to make the world a better place. Just because you might get hurt in the short term doesn't mean the benefits in the long term aren't going to be worth it. Overall, it's going to be worth it if we push for nuclear power now and not have nuclear reactors melt down and stuff like that. Oh. When did Egypt... Or, when, when did Italy get involved in... The, what the heck? His son, Ibn Abu Bakar. When did Egypt... Or, I keep saying Egypt. When did Italy get involved in Egypt? Dude, what are you doing? How did Germany not intervene or say no? Hmm... Well, that's quite interesting. Well, we have the Algerian mandate. Special Forces training is not bad. I, I do apologize for this episode where I'm talking quite fast just because oh, I might have had some coffee before this episode. So Saudi Arabia is looking pretty good against the... Actually, can I help them out? Do we like the Saudis? Not really. Faisal bin Abdullah, Abdulaziz Al Saud. Abdullah Al Salal. Much easier to say. Oh, he's got volunteers from Germany, though. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, wow. Holy crap. They must have sent him tanks. Holy cow. The Arab Republic is going crazy. And then Oman is kind of falling apart, but whatever. The death of Joseph Kennedy. A spokesman for the Kennedy family reports that today former President J.P. Kennedy passed away in his Massachusetts home at 81. He survived by his wife and six kids. The elder Kennedy leaves behind a complicated legacy. His success as patriarch of the Kennedy dynasty was substantial, and his sons John, Robert, and Edward all made names for themselves in the political sphere. The elder Kennedy was elected president at 32 and presided over the slow recovery of the U.S. from the Great Depression. Despite serious criticisms for his non-interventionist policy, both in economic and foreign policy, he won a second term in 36. The second term was mainly defined, which mainly defined Kennedy's continued reluctance to intervene in the European war, and failure to fully prepare the U.S. for global power projection against Japan or Germany. Kennedy was a source of much criticism in the aftermath of his presidency, which only increased after he failed, after the unfailed intervention in England and the signing of the Kagi Accords by successor Harry Truman. The Democrats would not hold the White House for another two decades when his son JFK succeeded the disgraced President Richard Nixon. Kennedy had spent the years after the presidency retired from public life, having lost his son Joe Jr. 
and in a bombing raid over the Pacific. But he re-emerged to help with his son's bid for the vice presidency. However, the elder Kennedy kept himself out of the public eye due to widespread criticism of comments he made advocating detente with Germany to focus on confronting Japan and refused to help with his son Robert's presidential run in 64. Regardless of how the American public remember him, Kennedy left a lasting mark on the nation's history and his family will most likely remember, continue to have a major role in politics for the foreseeable future. His dynasty lives on 600 billion in terms of GDP. Ah, uh, poor Kennedy. Poor, poor Kennedy. Prepare the launch pad. I gotta keep looking at this. 45. I'm gonna keep doing this. I want more research points. We have only 680 billion, which is fine. Support is 23%, which is not great. But high-powered relays? Increase rewards? I like more rewards. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily more public support, but for unmanned missions, also increase their budgets. Why can we do this? We can research oil now. Decrease the cost? I like that. Oh, man. Can we actually increase support here yet? No, we cannot. The pensions... Oh! Oh, I forgot about this. The Pension Security Act. I'm glad I looked down here. Uh, let's see. All 10 Republicans are on board. We have 23 with the Democrats. 23 plus 39. We should actually have enough support already. For the Pension Security Act, right? There's no room for the far right. If we have 39 plus 13, that's already 52. 52 plus 10 is 62. 62. That's 68. Out of 100 senators... 68 is pretty good, so I don't think we have to do anything. I think we're doing pretty well with that. So, hopefully I'll be right about that. Increase our rewards. Base preparedness. Mm. Oh, more rewards, potentially. So after this, we're going to prepare the launch pad and then launch it. So, Arnidius, lost and forgotten. Well, the party as a whole has been fired up by President Glenn's speech earlier this week. Cracks have started to show as usual. Younger progressive House members have contacted us to inquire whether about the administration could use its influence over the body to have the pension security bill amended in committee. Specifically, they want a proviso, requiring expanded pension benefits for those struggling with disabilities acquired over the course of their lifetime. The administration had already begun weighing whether to raise benefits for those born with disabilities, but this puts the president in a more difficult position. The progressives will be offended if we do not help all the disabled. Not just some, but at the same time, conservatives and the free market elements of the party are already critical of the proposal as it is. They are unlikely to support aiding those who made poor career choices or failed to act in a safe manner. The House Majority Leader has proposed a way around this hurdle. A proposed rider for the bill was increased military pensions for the disabled veterans. This had NPP support. Should we fold the disabled veteran riders into the amendment for those disabled as adults, we might just get enough NPP support to pass the bill even though defectors from our own party. Uh, this will greatly offend the conservatives though. What should we do? Do it for the disabled? Support among for the bill will increase upon the NPC. N NPPC? Oh boy. No, we have to settle for the birth disabled. Support for the bill... Oh, come on, man. De support for the bill will decrease among the NPP. So, without the NPP, we can only have 23... 29. We need the NPP with us. Support from Democrats? If passed, the bill will increase pensions even more. Our public support will increase. I've got to go with that one. I'm sorry, I've got to go with that. But the voters in the North Steel Belt and West will approve of this. We've got to do it. So now we have, what, 44, Jesus Christ. Now four of the far right. But, so we have 19, well, let's get 54, 63, 67. We still have 67. That's good enough. Hold the vote. Let's go. Let's do it now. Come on, hold the vote. We got it. And there's a little bit of lag. Okay, whatever. Siphon funding. I definitely want to do that. The downtrodden. Ooh, all's well. Let's see. Because there's one over here. We introduced the bill. We have two months to get it through the Senate. Ending the right to work. The unkept promise for drafting the Social Security Act. Dragging our feet on this could have dire consequences for our administration. The downtrodden. I guess we'll do that one too, since we're already doing this. We'll do the pension security bill too. So, with the work our cabinet has put into developing the conclusions we need in this bill to bridge every gap in American empathy, the most unfortunate persons of our society have been noted and being consistently looked past by presidents of history as well. Here we see the poor and destitute, those with little to no economic stability in their lives to begin with, and suffer through their lives with the difficulties they were born in, rather than created for themselves. With respect and care for such individuals, the proposed bill will include a sanction regarding the expansion of financial security nets and the payments towards the Americans who find themselves living in a state of poverty. With this, we shall engage in a great fight against the issue of increasing poverty for the lives of American citizens across the country and provide for them a method of escaping the circumstances with which they've been dealt with. So, we're already doing really well right there. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just more worried about NASA. Uh, yeah, 23% support. Not great. Here? Nope. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, Sudan. I don't think I can help them out, can I? No. Why would we want to get involved in foreign affairs? You know, why would we want to do that? We don't want to be like the past administrations getting involved in foreign conflicts abroad. And I say that right now, but we're going to get involved later on. I promise. 
Or at least I'm pretty sure. I don't promise that, but I'm pretty sure we'll get involved later on. Oh, Dofar, uh, does anyone want help? Anyone want some uh, airplane guys? Helicopter guys? Modern interrogation methods. Very cool. Diplomatic training. Thank you. Launch Orion 1. Oh, God. I, mm, I want to do that. No one's switching sides yet, which is good. Hold the vote. 35 days. Oh, God. We have 80... We're only 80% prepared. We've invested 270 of our 680 billion budget into the... A million budget into the, into the thing. Oh, God. I hope it goes well. I hope I already that is... We have 22 research points. Let's launch it. Let's see what happens. Please, come on. Don't crash and burn. Don't crash and burn. All systems are nominal. Good news from headquarters. Our latest unmanned mission had a successful launch. And NASA engineers have worked hard on this mission, and it looks like it paid off. The American people watch our launch both around the launch pad and at home from the TV sets. Back at NASA, we are eagerly awaiting the critical data that will come out of the mission. Who knows what we might find? Cheers were heard across the nation as the rocket left the Earth. The rocket's launch was out, went without a hitch as it ascended past the horizon. All systems are reporting back as nominal, and we will proceed as planned. We should be seeing the results of our mission fairly soon, but for now, it appears we are in the clear. We have one of three options will happen, and the one of three options will happen. Nothing happens. Okay, mission rewards. Ah, oh, we just retrieved uh, the full data from our last unmanned mission. Already our engineers are pouring over the data, but everyone down at HQ is happy with the results. Our boys at RD also have ideas on how this data can be put to use, potentially evolving a rocket program to even further heights. The announcement of a successful mission has garnered public support as well. More and more of our citizens are seeing our space program as a future of our nation. The people are setting their imaginations as to what we will do next. The continued success of our missions will continue to build public faith in the program. We got 46 research points and 3 public support from the unmanned mission. Mission accomplished. Invest... Ooh. Oh, wait, do we get to do this again? Okay, so we got up to 26%. We're going to need some more money, too. But, okay, cutting edge metals. Increased preparedness for Diana and Ares missions. Also, slightly increase the budgets. Oh, I want to do that, but we we haven't done Minerva. Decryption boosts. This one says... This one makes it sound like it's an unmanned mission. But this can help us get more support from the military, maybe. And maybe give us some technology boosts. So let's try to do Minerva next. I want. I will do a probe AIV too because it help us with our base preparedness, so we'd be more and more successful. I really want to sp increase the spending cap, but oh. But with this going through, we should be good enough. So, because I'm pretty sure you only need a majority in the Senate to actually pass bills, right? Like six hundred ten billion. Nice. What are we building still? More nuclear reactors in Washington. Build, build, build. Military austerity. Nope. I'm pretty sure they don't... A military probably doesn't like it that I'm constantly slashing their budget. But hey, at least I'm not stealing from it right now. or just shifting, siphoning funds out elsewhere, so... Sudan is won against Sudan. So, our current project is undecided with 0% prepared. Oh, God, I'm going to have to invest more money. Our downtrodden, though. The poor constitute a potential problem for the Pension Security Act. With low income, they would likely not be able to sufficiently pay into the program to such a degree that they could live a comfortable life in retirement. While the bills already had a section added ensuring that welfare payments for low-income households are exempted from pension taxation that would further complicate their already troubled situation, that only worsens the situation they may face upon retirement. The progressive faction in the House has presented a package of amendment sections and writers to the bill to address the issue. The amendments authorize a bill to access welfare funds to pad the pension checks for low-income pensioners, while the writers said, or, uh, the writers expand said welfare budgets by increasing social safety nets, and unemployment benefits, and social assistance programs. Needless to say, adding this package to the bill would be a courageous decision. The conservatives and business lobby are likely to howl bloody murder, or at least Bukharanist ma mania, at expanding welfare via rider. But like with the disability provisions, there's a chance that we may be aided by the MPP defectors and still pass the bill. Can we risk it? Our public support will increase. The people in the South really don't like us. Yeah, I gotta get more support, so. There you go. So now we have 10, all 49 of the NPP Social Democrats. I mean, that's still pretty good. So we've got 59 plus 8 is 60. Seven, right? Nine plus eight. I should be. Yeah. Oman is one against Oman. I mean, we haven't really changed. The, the far right doesn't like us anymore. The MPP center loves us. The Democrats don't really care for us. And the Republicans, well, somehow we got all Republicans on board. Cool. Oh, and we can do this too. You know what? Let's, ooh, the pension security bill. Voting will commence on this pension security bill. Ooh. Let's try that. We could probably try that. So, 
With the revisions coming towards the legislation finalized, our administration will send the bill towards vote in Congress. Although many in our nation believe that such a bill to be an insult towards the Treasury, we, all we can do is make sure that the bill is secured for the less fortunate in our society. We as Americans are promised to live within a nation that champions freedom, justice, poverty, and ex progress. And the bill we have composed will only expand upon the possibilities of living in a greater and empathetic society that elderly, disabled, and the less fortunate are Americans all the same, and thus deserve the right to a fair society for them. And thus will enjoy a substantial increase in the provisions for all that they have equally suffered. Though many in the House and Senate believe the bill to be far too expensive, and a political distraction from the President's extreme fascination with space, we must do what we can for our nation. Bring in technicians. I want more research points, but... Ooh. De decreases the cost, though. That's not bad. I like decreased costs. It's 1970, my friends. Happy New Year. It's finally, we can get some more research speed. 3% more. Not bad. Invest that money. Good. Smart academic base. Hey, time and time again. Societies crumble. All will agree it is usually a slow, painful process. However, there are many voices of dissent as to the exact cause. One prominent theory is that the foundation of any complex society is education. Molding adolescents to fit a role in any society is key to maintaining its longevity. When a society experiences conflict, it will be, be it economic recession, civil war, or social conflict, money and attention is often drawn away from schooling, creating a vicious cycle that slows down technological progress and discovery and kills curiosity towards the future. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. At this point, I'm, I'm going to stop investing into this stuff. I really want to invest more into this, but... We need... I want more research points, but... Uh, we don't have as much as I would have loved to have. Air detection, we can wait on that. Let's go over to this one. Civilian Construction 5. Or 4. Numbers. I can't think right now. Cool. Any more money? Oh, yeah, we do. Nice. 620. All right, so... Hey, well, it's already 51% prepared. God dang. Nice. We're going to test the rocket. Anything here? Higher technicians. Uh, support right now is 26%, which is... Uh, Test the rocket. Hmm. So for 25, you get 15. 25 million, you get 5. For 50 million, you get 15. 40 million, you get 40. Run diagnostic simulations. That'll be good. That'll be very, very good. I just want to go to space, man. Why can't I just go to space? We're trying. We're trying desperately. Uh, let's see. 10% cap, 5% cap, output. Yeah. Flexible automation techniques. That's good stuff. How about get better guns? Just a little two years old at this point, but that's fine. Whatever. Nice. Grab some support weapon six. That'd be great. Get some better guns going. Thank you. And we'll finish off with one more focus. With this episode. Oh, how is the voting gone? Completely forgot about it. So all ten. Hold the vote. Oh, we failed. Whoopsie. Well, that's not good. I don't know you had to do that all, all as fast as possible. Ooh, increased party unity. Between the R and D's. Hey, American Studies somewhat unified. Beginnings of a brighter future. To the office of the President of the United States, it is with the greatest pride that our administration has managed to see the first sproutings of our desires for a safe and secure American future today. Washington reports a successful approval of the American Nuclear Security Initiatives, our development program for research and development of nuclear technology, escalating towards the development of more revolutionary ideas of weapon, nuclear weapons. Already, teams of scientists have been organized and prepare, prepared for future assignments in hopes of a stronger America. May the swastika and imperial flag never threaten the stars and stripes again, Mr. President. Cyrus Vance, National Security Advisor. Humble beginnings. Beautiful. Civilian budget boost. Keep spending more money. Yeah, 21%. God dang, that is not ideal. Whew. We're going to get more money later, soon soon enough, so. But the Minerva program. Come on, pass a god dang thing. Class 1 Senate elections. U.S. is once again gearing for elections. Oh, crap. You know, I'm going to... We want to keep America strong and free. But if I don't do anything... So, okay, so with this one, as far as I understand right now, the time of this recording, if I do nothing and I go for the MPP, that means that RDs might get elected. We'll save this for next time, though. Because as much as I want to help out the Republican Democrats for now, because I want to get them into power as much as possible, we'll see what happens. But the cent the Pension Security Act passes. We did it despite the internal disagreements in the party. The bill has passed the House, and it's almost guaranteed to pass the Senate. Finally, we've taken some small steps towards a fair and just America, one in which the old can live worthy lives. Our public support will increase significantly. Great. Uh, voters in the North and Steuba will approve, and the South and the Rockies and the West will disapprove. Ooh, our property rate will increase. We have new expenses costing 1% of our current GDP. Oh, boy. Hold the vote. That is great. Great, great, great. And what else do we have? Let's finish this episode with a new focus. Surviving the Cosmos? 
siphon funding just in case. The Pentagon budget is massive. It's the single largest line item in federal expenditures. Now, while most of it goes to things like paying our soldiers and maintaining our tanks, ships, and planes, there's always a bit here and there that isn't actually going to keep America safe right now. Pet projects, bloated defense contracts, and theoretical programs that are years, if not decades, away from fruition. If we divert some funding from these programs to NASA, we can get to space much faster. And if a few guys in uniforms go with too many stars on their shoulders and not enough imagination in their brains start yelling, well, so be it. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this episode because we are trying to get to space as fast as possible. Wow, 30%? That's significantly more approval? Man, we suck. But anyways, regardless, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Glenn. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will continue shooting for the stars. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.